Well, here we are. I'm sitting in a chair with two weird cones on my legs and no shoes. You guys know what we're getting into today. People often ask, Coyote, where did the origin of your bite and sting <laughs> climb begin? <laughs> Truth be told, right here at this very harvester ant mount. Ah, that was one on my neck. Now the harvester ant specifically has one of the most potent venoms in the entire insect kingdom. These little creatures inspired me to climb up Justin Schmidt's insect sting pain index. Ah! I climbed the index in my own way, but it began with this insect. You may also be noticing these weird contraptions on my legs. Those are called ant blockers and will help us keep the ants contained to my legs and my feet. The last time we did this, they covered my body and I got stings in all sorts of places that you wouldn't necessarily want to show on camera. Jeez. Now when it comes to ants, what we ultimately learned in our first episode is that they do ah. bite and they ah. do sting. All the ah. pain comes from the venom that is in that sting. Ah. You guys know what's gonna happen, right? I'm gonna remove my feet off of this little stool and I'm gonna try to withstand 60 seconds worth of bites and stings to show you guys exactly why you want to avoid harvester ants if you ever come across them in the wild or even right in your own backyard. So if you guys are ready, it is time to revisit the origin of stings by standing in a mound of harvester ants. I don't wanna step on anybody going in here. Okay, now when it comes to aggravating ants, I won't have to do much. All I'll need to do is stand around the opening and the second one of them stings, they release a sting pheromone, which tells the rest of them it's time to attack. Now we're gonna start the timer from the second I start to get stung. Right now the ants are just beginning to investigate the fact that I am standing above their home and this entire colony spreads out in this entire area where you see no plants actually growing. The mound, the catacomb beneath the surface is massive. And you can see the ants are starting to investigate me. No stings yet. They're just like, okay, oh, okay, there's one sting right there on the inside of my foot. Now, ah! Another sting on the back of the foot there. Yep, okay, so once that sting pheromone begins to tell the ants that an invader is here, more stings will come. And you can see at this point, there are more and more ants beginning to surround my feet. Ah! Ugh, I'm getting right in between my toes right now. Ah! Now, I haven't been moving my feet around very much, just keeping them in one spot. If an animal were to stumble upon a nest, or you, ah! There's one right in between my pinky toe and my next to my pinky toe. Ah, man, that is a very sensitive spot. So they will tell each other, hey, we've got something out here that's not going away. Usually once an animal, like a skunk or a coyote, gets stung on its nose once or twice, they're like, okay, this is not a situation for me to mess with. But in this instance, ah, I just keep enduring. Oh, geez, yeah, 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 yeah. Okay, oh, it's getting worse and worse as they begin to swarm more and more so. But you can see they're not all over the tops of my feet. They're actually going under my feet, strangely enough. Wow, you guys just are making an encampment under my feet. Look at this. When I move my feet, boom, ants everywhere. Now, if my feet were horn lizards, which are notorious for coming in and feasting on these little insects, this is exactly what would happen. The ants would swarm out and try to take out that reptile. But fortunately for the horn lizard, their skin is so thick and rugged, the ants are not capable of stinging through it. So the horn lizard will just sit there, like you see with my feet, and lap up ant after ant after ant. Ah, oh, this is getting rather unbearable at this point. And the stings don't come in as much of a wave as the fire ants do. And that's the big difference between the fire ants and the harvester ants. The fire ants are just like a tidal wave of stings. The harvester ants are a bit more calculated. They're exploring my feet, they're finding the soft spots, and then they're moving in to bite and inflict that sting. Oh man, it is so uncomfortable to have them in between my toes. Oh buddies, come on, you can make it a little bit longer. The first time I did this, it was such a shock to my body and my system. Running around, ants all over my body. At this point, I've been in the mound for several minutes, taking sting after sting after sting. And my body, while it's uncomfortable, definitely not as uncomfortable as it was the first time around. I wish I had the skin of a horned lizard at the moment. Oh, ah, I yield, I yield, I yield. <laughs> out, of the, out of the harvester ants. Okay, now that I've endured, 
a second go with the harvester ants, we're gonna go visit my good friend and inspiration entomologist, Justin Schmidt, the godfather of the insect sting pain index and get his reaction to today's ultimate chaos. Several weeks ago when I placed my arm inside of a box of angry yellow jackets, I said to myself, this is ridiculous. I'm not getting stung by anything else. Yeah, here we are two weeks later and I just put my feet into a nest of harvester ants, which are species you oftentimes see right here in your own backyard. Now, what's your experience been thus far with harvester ants? They hurt. Yeah. And they, they're kind of sneaky because often they'll get on your feet and you don't know it. And it's just when they get underneath, like typically I wear sandals, mm -hmm. when they get between the sandal and my foot, then you're in trouble. Mm. And, and they don't hurt like a, a yellow jacket or honeybees, like wham, you feel it right away. These kind of sneak up on you. But then they also have this, what I call an unesthetic pain. It's not anything you can put your fingers on, but you don't like it. Yeah, yeah it, that's it, a great, you're like, you. what's happening to me right now? And, and it can kind of creep up. Like it'll get the lymph nodes. I've had them sting my feet. Mm -hmm. And they, you have a lymph node up in your groin area and that starts swelling up and that feels really bad. Yeah. You don't like that. Again, it's not a sharp pain. It's not a piercing pain, but you don't like that. And the interesting thing about these ants is they use them in puberty rites in California back in the 1800s before the Indians were all moved out. And they use them and they would eat eagle feathers with 100 or 200 ants on. Like what, dipping eagle feathers into ants and then eating that? Yeah, and they, they would get stung in their throat and their stomach and all. And the good thing is they don't tend to swell, but then these kids would go into this sort of hallucination like, ah, and the great spirit would come down and guide them through their life of don't eat ants. You know, I, something like that. I have to note that on that whole hallucination element, like I can imagine them going into your body and you getting stung would be a whole lot worse than on your feet. But for a solid 45 minutes after taking the stings, and I guess I kind of went through this last time because I've done harvester ants on my hands and experienced mild swelling. Um, same thing with my feet, but man, I felt like I was under the influence of alcohol or narcotic for a solid 45 minutes after I had taken all the stings. Like I was almost delirious at one point, and not so much in the pain, but just like my body being super out of it. Yeah. So that makes a lot of sense. Yeah, the, the Native Americans, obviously felt the same way. Mm -hmm. They use the same kind of ants, Pagana miramax californicus, which we have Maricopa. Mm -hmm. Maricopa's in Arizona, yep. California, California. But they're basically the same thing. And, and they obviously have the same effect because these poor kids would go out in the fall this time of year and they'd get, get all these ants that they were eating. And then they'd go out until the great spirit gave them a guidance for life and then they were allowed to come back in and join the manhood. Hmm. Well, when it comes to the great spirit giving me guidance in life, I don't know if it's guiding me in the direction of taking no more stings, but I will say at this point, I'm no longer experiencing pain, so it makes it a lot better than the yellow jacket box. And the good thing about harvester ants is that unlike fire ants, the stings don't swell up into unsightly white pustules. So when it comes to the harvester ant experience, far easier to maintain than fire ants. Justin, thank you so much for taking all this time to visit with us today. The inspiration that you've brought to myself and everybody else out there who loves insects and arachnids is staggering. We could not do this without you. And if you guys have not checked out Justin's book, I highly recommend it. It is a fascinating read, but do not follow the insect sting pain index like you've seen me doing. You don't want all of that pain that comes with the bites and stings. So thank you guys for watching. Justin, thank you for continuing to be a Yoda in my quest to find out what's the next most painful sting. I'm Coyote Peterson. I'm Justin Schmidt. Be brave. And be wild. We'll see you on the next adventure.